Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, well, good afternoon, good evening. May Jesus Christ bless you. Right. We're going to have a bit of a conversation about um, the flaws within the Matrix. And not just the flaws within the Matrix, just um, the fabric of society. I guess that is the flaws within the Matrix, the society's fabric. And um, it's not a bit of conversation, it's just... Look, I think the time's coming this year, 2023, is definitely a year for it, for exposure. And um, the worst thing is, is when excuses are made that not even common sense can justify for excuses, you begin to recognise what's the real issue with the world that we live in, right? So, I just had something happen this morning. Um... Very generously, I purchased a gift for a business, and uh, I gave it to them last week, and um, they actually put it through their policies and protocols and procedures and all the rest of it, and this morning they were like, we, we can't have it. And I was just like, oh, it's all good. like, for what it is, it's going straight into my workshop because it actually makes my life a hell of a lot easier. But what I want to explain to you is like, this is what's wrong with the world. And this gift that I bought for this company is a little bit like what we light workers are to this world. So, the other day, there's a guy that's, um, putting up videos at the moment exposing a particular gutter mesh company in the US and um, what he's sick of is the fact that, what do we say this, cops have just done, got someone speeding. What he's sick of is the fact that um, this company keeps selling to the elderly, saying you'll never have to climb a ladder again. And then what he has to do then is his life is the maintenance man for all of these elderly people that bought this product and he's got to clean their gutters out for them because the style of gutter mesh that it is absolutely collects leaves and it goes rot, you know, makes the water in the tanks rotten and like just it's just a perpetual cycle so it collects leaves and it turns it into dirt and just goes back through the recycling cycle of nature and it may not go into the gutters but it's collected it above the gutter and it doesn't actually disappear off the roof itself so look if they'd sold it and said it'll stop it from going into the gutters but you may need to get on a leaf blower and just clear it every couple of months you could accept that but they sold it as never get on a ladder again. So, it, and this dude's put video after video after video up, and they got to the point that that company offered him forty-eight thousand US dollars, I think, to take his videos down. But he's like, no, not doing it. I'm exposing this shit for what it is. Anyway, um, look. Now this isn't me being malicious. I'm just. This has just been my life today with many different specifics. So, about 15 years ago, I had something similar happen with, um, you know those waterless urinals? See, it's the maintenance people that have to suffer these great ideas. And I was, walk I was working in a, a restaurant chain, and um, with this, I started to realize something about these waterless urinals. One building I came across, um, because since these chains, it's all fast food, a person's urine isn't exactly typical urine, it's all full of um, the fast food junk, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, all well and good, until you get underneath these buildings and um, one of the pipes is pulled apart altogether and a, a literal look of, sorry, Ghostbuster slime 
has just flooded out all over the floor next to the pipe because the actual urine itself became like a toxic ammonia that melted the actual plumbing pipe itself. So we're talking, you get enough urine in one spot when it's not flushed away, it gets that hot from fermentation inside of it that it will break glue and release a pipe, right? So I started looking at this and I created an idea and it was only because, you know, I'm a plumber in the UK, plumbing and heating engineer, it's fine. And what I came to recognize within a standard is because you've got you know, industry standards. So this is what this is all about is industry standards. And with it, I came to recognize that it was, I'm talking 15 years ago now, but I think it was like, um, there has to be a reasonable source of water to flush every trap or drain within a sewage system something along those lines and it was within a couple of meters and there was fall and there was wind breaks and you know just plumbing stuff anyway like at the time i was all over it like a rash anyway um so what i began to do with all of my restaurants because i had plenty of them was with these waterless urinal systems i rerouted you know where people wash their hands that water past the urinal drain so that every time someone washed their hands it flushed the drain and they no longer had this build up of like ghostbuster slime that was the most toxic ammonia you'd ever come across anyway um i went to the waterless urinal company about this and of course i got stonewalled and they didn't want to hear about it and all the rest of it but where we at it right now is like a bit like the gutter mesh company is the same as this waterless urinal company someone had a great idea but they didn't think it through completely and it probably wasn't tradespeople that had the idea right now anyone can have an idea and get it manufactured in india or china anyone can do that you need to be a tradesperson to have these types of ideas to weed out the kinks because typically when you're a tradie you're the one that's got to maintain these damn things look another I'd hate to say it, I was dealing with a, um, a non-for-profit that was dealing with underprivileged youth. And um, unfortunately, I discovered that this non-for-profit was using the victim stories of these underprivileged youth to pull grants so they could line their own pockets to have a good retirement with. Terrible. Uh, another one, I was dealing with a local town's water issue and for some reason copious amounts of a particular element was being over inserted into this water. And anyway, I looked into it and you know, the surface level was no good, the level beneath the surface level was no good, none of it was any good but there was obviously a common denominator which was a reasonable explanation of what was going on and what I actually came to understand it was about supply and demand. Now with the supply and demand what I came to understand with this water issue is that um, in fact the original system that they put in place was built for the original town. So the original town was for say three or four thousand people. Um, since then though they had developed the place up to about ten thousand people and they were still trying to treat water 10,000 people from the original 3,000 people treatment plant. There was a supply and demand issue. But anyway, so they're overdosing the guts of this water with this particular element, but unfortunately that element attached with like you know, fluoride, uh, you know, caused a bit of an issue where obviously the local aged home was filled with people that have, you know, memory issues, which is what it is. But again and again, these are all society's issues. Now not only that, beyond that, I then thought, geez, I need to get the right answer for this as a good citizen. So I went to the top of the top of the top to the person that wrote the books for the entire country and um, they knew that I knew and they they attacked me as well and I was like, huh, why does it seem like this person that wrote the book didn't write the book? And I was like, it's like this person's just a gatekeeper for someone else again. Yeah, it's fine. 
Like it's all coming out this year. Right? This is why I'm here on Earth, because I'm going to enjoy exposing everything as it needs to be exposed and putting people in jail the way they need to be jailed. It's good stuff. Anyway, so after going through yeah, the, the broken pieces within the matrix, corruption, right? What I'm about to talk to you about next isn't corruption, it's just explaining to you when I lived in the UK, that was 15, 13, 15 years ago, um, a couple of things I came to recognise was this is a world built upon problems you're not meant to fix. Period. A lot of companies have built themselves on problems that weren't supposed to be fixed. Period. So when people come along with a better idea and it starts to fix these problems, you really start to piss a few people off, eh? Because, like, you weren't meant to fix these problems. Which now comes to my little gift. Because the only reason why I purchased the gift, really, like, yes, it's genuine, but you look at the same time it was a bit of an experiment to see where's this going to go. I find it very interesting that it has gone where it has gone. Right? So... As someone who is fully qualified in business and you know, understands health and safety to the dot and dying cross T, along with you know, business management skills, policies, procedures, certifications, just top end CEO stuff, understand it. Um, when I see somewhere and everyone's struggling to be able to move things. Um, yeah, we're talking companies built upon horse and cart, and you've got, look, here's the Ferrari. No, they don't want the Ferrari. No, 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 no. So, um, company, companies, not just one, I've, I've recognized this of many of them, trolleys, you know, pool trolleys, and what they've got at best is these little plastic pallets that they put underneath the pool trolleys so they've got their boxes and they put the trolleys underneath them and um, they move them from one spot to the next you know what I mean? um, and so I'm a little bit and then obviously you've got health and safety and nothing can be lifted over a certain height and yeah, just all the intricate finicky, finicky things that can create excuses for reasons for why things may or may not be able to happen. Anyway, whatever. So, when I see the horse and cart being used, you know, the trolleys, um, and I know that it's not quite pallets, so we're like, well, a pallet jack of some description, so what would a miniature forklift look like, which would be better than a trolley? So then, what I get is a little miniature scissor lift platform that only needs the foot to lift it. It can lift up to 150 kilos, right? Because my idea is, is that if there is a dock for the stuff to be able to arrive at, lift it up to the height of the dock, slide it on, lift it up to the bench, slide it off, or lower it, slide it. Lift, slide, lower, slide. No more lifting. Because since lifting is an issue because we've got health and safety concerns, even though everyone's having to bend over to put boxes on the ground. So they're fine with putting boxes on the ground um, with these weights that exceed more often than not health and safety legislation, but they're not fine with pulling a trigger to allow it to lower for them so they can slide it off. <laughs> so... <laughs> so when I receive this gift back and I'm just like, so you, you can't accept a lift assist. And Samuel said, hath the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings. Um, when you got people that have an issue with health and safety and lifting, and their entire life is based upon health and safety and lifting, and they're having to lift things from a certain height and place it down onto the ground. And what you've done is come along and you've offered them a solution where they no longer have to do any sort of manual handling. All they've got to do is 
move their foot and pull a trigger so it lifts it up and down for them. You could have made it motorized, so all they had to do was press a button. But um, they couldn't accept that because it didn't work within their business appliances. Right? Look, I would have to say that the real issue here is, is as much as they like to complain, if they accept that gift, it means that they can now lift things above 16 kilograms. So what they're actually saying, and this is what they would be better off, of, they would have been better off saying is, we can't accept it because it would allow us to lift heavier than health and safety states that we can. So we need to keep complaining and using horse and cart because we're not supposed to lift anything above this certain weight. Look, I knew that in the first place. It was just interesting watching how a gift that I gave to a company went through an entire policy and procedure protocol to be able to come to the understanding that I knew was the case in the first place. So, isn't it funny how sometimes solutions um, it's not that they're not wanted they're threatening, they're intimidating. What they actually do is they solve, they resolve everything that was being whinged about. So now what happens is, now that I've received the gift, they can never whinge again about using a horse and cart. They just have to accept it, and no more complaining, it is what it is, it is what it is. But this is the issue that sits within the society that we are in. Too often, oh well, what is it? Misery loves company, but beyond misery loves company, people love to whinge. They're always whinging. Um, if they didn't have something to whinge about, they'd have nothing to talk about. So what it does when you find a solution to a quite a large problem is you take away the only thing they've got in their life to talk about, which is the problem that they're not willing to deal with. So fortunately or not, again and again, the rejection for me is a protection because what I gifted to them, uh, I'm going to use this in my engineering workshop now because I'm building a bridge. <laughs> And with that bridge, I would like to be able to lift things and lower things to be able to get millimetre spec perfection when I'm doing my welding. So it's all win-win here. I don't have to do any more manual handling that I don't need to have to do. But that's how the matrix is pretty damn flawed. Um, there are a lot of companies out there that were built upon ideas that didn't go through the the proving ground of maintenance trades that had to look after what was developed. Um, but not only that, there are a lot of companies and there are a lot of people that have positions. So again and again, what did my trolley do? They took our jobs. They took away the need for a job. The one thing they got to whinge about, it removed their need to whinge. Anyway, it all is what it is, what it is. But in a world where you can't fix problems because people love to complain, I think it's just a simple fix. Let them whinge. It's not worth helping them. <laughs> um, uh, again, should have asked. It's fine. Um, beyond that, though, I just... Look, it's a little bit like each to their own. We've just got to stick in their own lane and do what it is that we've got to do. I've been trying to resolve a specific issue with this lifting problem because I've got a horrible freight problem in my area, but um, I just expect that that resolves. It's no longer a problem anymore, but what I've come to understand out of it, it really is, is just um, people love to win and they don't want their problems fixed. So that kind of puts you in a situation where like we're here as problem solvers, but there's nothing to solve, like the world's broken. But there's nothing to solve because people love a broken world. They don't want to. They don't want to not live in a broken world because if it was fixed, where's the problem? Um, they don't like upgrades. It's just, it is what it is. So I don't really know what the greater point out of all of this is because it's not to belittle. It's not to try and call out. It's not to try and you know do exposure. I mean, an upgraded world would be a fantastic world to be honest with you, but long and short of it is, people don't want this world. They love living in 
the broken down life that they've got and they don't want those upgrades to make life a little bit easier. Or they want to complain about life being easier but they'd rather it not be easier because then they'd have nothing to complain. Anyway, so first of all, if you've got an idea that you know is a solution to a big issue, if it gets rejected, don't feel rejected. There is always reasons. I know what my reasons are. Um, it's satanic. <laughs> And, again, if what I had offered was accepted, they couldn't whinge anymore, which is what it is. So, they had to not accept what I've handed to them because they need the ability to be able to whinge. And, just goes to show that, like, yeah, even if there is a solution for complaints, if you remove the reason to complain, they can't complain anymore. So, they needed to keep their ability to be able to whinge, which is what it is. Um... In regards to these other companies, you know, the gutter mesh, you know, the waterless urinals, you know, the treatment plants that were for town, just, what's the common denominator here? Upgrades. 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 If you had a computer or if you had a phone that didn't get its software upgrade, where would we be at right now? Everything could be falling apart. So, I think that's the bigger concern or the conundrum that I'm trying to talk about here is just we live on a planet you know we're talking about the broken matrix it doesn't like upgrades oh unless there is a synchronistic flow where the upgrade just comes on in and everyone's involved with it and it feels like a good idea so you've got influence that you need to also have in place to be able to get an upgrade received it's a bit like Neo in the matrix isn't it um the old has to make way for the new, and it doesn't like the fact that the new is um, completely superior in every way, shape, or form, and it's it's time's done, you know? It is what it is. But these upgrades, just like what I've showed you, so the upgrade of like manual handling and lifting, we live in a world that would like to be in horse and cart when it needs to go to the next level, which is at least... Let's take away that manual handling so we can actually start to be able to do much larger. But then at the same time, they would prefer to not do large, which is what it is. But, um, you know, saying it's a world that's based upon problems that weren't supposed to be fixed. Upgrades. This is the entire issue with planet Earth. Upgrades. Jesus Christ is the upgrade. 2,000 years we've had to, do, to take the upgrade. No one's taking it. So when the Lord goes, well... My harvest is few, and the rest is going to be cleansed, is what it is. Yeah. So, the great conundrum of life. Where is your heartache sitting with your good ideas? Is something ready for an upgrade? Sorry, is something prepared to receive the upgrade, not is it ready? There is always upgrades. Is the market that you are working with prepared to receive the upgrade that you've got to give are they desperate enough yet essentially so i would hate to say it that's why with time running out the, the sand's going to be right at the end of the hourglass but it's only once it finishes and goes down to the other side when jesus does the rapture only once it's too late will this planet be ready to go oh jesus you are our lord cool accept me as a martyr you had your chance you know what i mean so I think that was the bigger point to why I was bringing this conversation up in the first place is like, where are people at in general with being prepared to receive upgrades? As you've just seen with what I've been talking about, um, there is simple fixes to be able to get these upgrades incorporated into the systems to be able to have minimal downturn and create you know, major upliftment. Um, some of these companies they probably don't need to be in business anymore because they've you know, fraudulently made the money that they've had but others it could be a case of putting in you know, maintenance protocol or and that there could simply be type a booklet out once place it on a website it's a downloadable PDF and all you've got to do is you know, download it you've got the information life's good move on to the next but um yeah. Again and again and again. Don't underestimate just how offended 
people will be in um, not wanting to, in thinking that an upgrade is needed, in not wanting to receive it. It's like medicine. Upgrades are like a medicine, eh? People are like kids with medicine, or, or like kids trying to eat broccoli. Or, you know, like just upgrade is a medicine, and people are like kids with broccoli trying to receive it. And that's literally the whole dilemma of humans. Humans don't like upgrading to the next level so that they can get away from the mediocrity that they're suffering in. Anyway, Jesus loves you. May God bless you. May the Holy Spirit guide you in your own journey. I hope this helps you to understand why, if you've been hitting yourself, your head against a brick wall, there are reasons for that. Um, see, the system that I'm working on, the, on at the moment, um, they... And I actually just got water back to the the whole thing. It was 18 or 20 years in the making before I turned up, before they were actually ready. So, for it, and where are we at with it? It was that summer that, see, all the grounds were dug out, water mains were burst everywhere. Like, it was that summer where they were down to their last half of a paddy, where if that had gone, the whole place would have gone pear-shaped and tits up. I turned up right at the last moment, and that was when they were ready to go, right, please get it fixed now. What am I trying to say here? Personal responsibility states, change your oil regularly. Do your maintenance, as upgrades are needed, do it. The world that we live in, they'd rather never change their oil, but then complain with the oil not being changed, and... Um, Or they would rather, yeah, you know, we're talking filters, oil, it, you, know, you know what I'm trying to get at. Humans are vehicles that have never been serviced. And um, you've got those of us who are what you would call the awakened collective. We accept our upgrades regularly and frequently and we don't feel concerned about them because we know that they are something that we have to do because if we don't, we kind of get left behind. Most humans, though... They like that oil that they've had there since the day they were born, even though it's not serving them and it's full of dredge and gunk. And what is oil? Dirty blood. Um, they like to swim in the dirty blood that you know, they've lived in their entire life. Anyway, so don't get upset if what you're doing isn't working. I think this is why I've put this together. Just accept that humans don't like change. And um, the amount of effort that they will go to in order to stop change happening, you'd have to then ask the question, is it really worth being involved in the first place? You just leave them to it and just let them you know, die out or just do what it is they do and it's no longer your problem. You know, this is just a part of the great experiment which is planet Earth, you know, the great works if you want to call it that, but yeah. people don't like change. Uh, they don't want the royal change, they don't want new filters, they don't want fresh fuel. They just want the same old garbage and that's how they'd rather function. Anyway, Jesus loves you. I hope this has helped you somehow. Have a really good day. Bye for now.